G'day folks, Danny here from Drones for Hire. We, today we're going to look at uh, taking a map out of DJI Terra uh, and being able to utilize that map in a GIS software platform called QGIS to generate some contours. So I've got a map ready to go here that we'll have a look at. Pretty simple map, uh, about uh, uh, maybe 10 hectares or, or a little bit more. Uh, and what we want to do is take this from our processing software and be able to import it uh, elsewhere uh, or into, into another system. So to do that, we want to select our map. And you'll have down here a number of little icons down the bottom of that selected map. You want the export option, which is the little folder tray with the arrow. And... We want to select 2D maps in the content export and hit OK. So once we do that, uh, it'll download to your nominated directory. Uh, in this case, it's documents. And it'll come down as a zip file. So we'll wait for that to process. And while we're doing so, we will jump into QGIS. So QGIS is an open source software uh, that allows you to implement any kind of GIS aspect. Uh, that you might want and manipulate manipulate your maps or run data on your maps. So uh, once we've downloaded QGIS, uh, we want an empty project and that will open up for us. Uh, and this is our canvas window or our map window uh, and down here are our layers. So now that we've done that uh, and we've got our documents folder with our multi-species trial, we can extract this multi-species trial folder and that'll go to the same directory. Now it's important here, I'm going to leave it in this directory, but it's important here to move your also mosaic into the directory that you want to draw upon for your QGIS layers or your files. Often I create a project file folder and then everything gets saved into that and all of my content that I'm working on or all of my layers uh, also go into that folder so that I know that it's all there. So what we're going to be doing today, if we go back to QGIS, uh, we'll be bringing our author mosaic in and then we'll be utilizing this tool, the extraction tool, and extracting the contours from our raster. So we'll just wait for this to continue processing and extract for us. And then we'll be able to bring it into our content, into our QGIS platform. Okay, so we're back now and we've extracted our map to our documents folder. So we'll open that and you want to look for a folder called map. And then in here, you've got a number of folders, uh, sorry, files. You've got a DSM or a digital surface model uh, and your also mosaic uh, and you've got a few other bits and pieces. We want the DSM. So find the DSM and we're going to drag that into QGIS and you'll see when we jump back in, you'll see here that we've got a black and white image. Now, the reason why I've got a black and white image is this is an indexed file, uh, which has a significant amount of data that we want to then capture for, uh, or can capture for a number of things. In this case, it's our contours. Down here, we've got our banding, and this indicates our elevation. Uh, so from here, we want to hit our raster file or file, uh, menu uh, up the top and make our way down or navigate our way down to extraction and then come down to contour and click that. A little window, window will open up, uh, and this will provide us with the details that we can then input so uh, in simple terms, what we're looking for are contour lines to be generated at a certain elevation. 
uh, or at a certain interval. And what we want there is interval between contour lines. Uh, as default, it's set at 10 meters. We're going to, for, for this for these purposes, make it one meter. And then we also just need to scroll down here to contours and to where we would like to save this folder. Hit the little arrow, drop down arrow here and select save to file. And this is where you want your, your particular um, file directory or for now, we're just going to save it in here. name your file, hit save. And then from there, we run this or execute uh, this process by clicking run down the bottom here. Now, if you keep this contour window open, you'll get a, a status bar and this will show you how long you've, how, how much the process and give you an indication of how, uh, how long is left to run. You can also see it if we remove move back into our main QGIS window. You can also see it down here uh, in this bar here. So we'll let that run. And uh, once we have finished, we'll uh, come back and have a bit of a look at it. So here we are back in QGIS and we've had our uh, process run. Uh, but you can see just down in this contour window, it'll say algorithm contour finished. Uh, that gives us an indication that, that those contours have, uh, have, have been completed. So we can close this window now. And we can see here from our digital surface model, we've now been able to generate a contour map with an interval of one meter. Uh, so each of these main lines provides us uh, with yeah, a, an interval of one meter. And then what we can do is, again, on a basic level, uh, hit the, the little label or layer labeling options uh, up in your toolbar. Alternatively, you can let, uh, right click on the contours layer and select properties and then move down to labels. Here you can give the contour an elevation label. So from no labels, we select single labels. And then this gives you an, a, um, an idea of uh, yeah, how you can format those labels and have a bit of a play with uh, whatever representation you like. The most important thing is this value up here. This assigns what piece of data or what attribute is displayed on the contour. So uh, it can be given a, um, a QGIS ID, a, uh, an ID that you give it, a number, uh, an elevation, or you can also create in an attribute table, you can create other, other labels if, um, if you like, or uh, adjust to those labels accordingly. So now that we've changed that, uh, often down here, I use uh, map units. And then give it a bit of a size and you can play around with that and hit okay. So access your attribute table. You can open the attribute table here and this will give you uh, your elevations or your elevation data uh, that you can kind of have a look at. You can also weed out uh, things like uh, vegetation or um, any anything else, any other little lines that you might want to remove or contours you might want to remove. You can do so here. So you can do that by finding move selection to top. This is this is always quite uh, quite a good little feature. 
And then in the layer, the little yellow pencil, you can toggle the edit. So um, you can then start to edit features. You can click, uh, select your select feature tool, click a particular contour line that might be of interest. Then we can move back to our attribute table and that will be uh, up here in the top uh, or on the top for you. So this is a bit of a zoom in of the contour line. As you can see, they're quite high uh, resolution because of the GSD or the ground sample distance is quite high. To soften that out, you might want to reduce your file, uh, reduce your um, your sizing uh, or your your ground sample distance, or um, reduce your resolution in your uh, in your map, which you can also do through QGIS, or you can do it uh, in some in other programs. So now we have our DSM, we have our contours. Uh, we would now like to bring in our RGB map. So we'll go back to our RGB multi-species directory, go back into our map and find the file called result and drag that into QGIS. While we're waiting for that to come in, if you'd like to play with some of these other properties of the of your contour data, uh, uh, for instance, change the color of the line, you can do that here. Um, I often use red can be a pretty good uh, pretty good color, but depending on how I'm displaying and interpreting the data, um, it can vary. So you can do that up here uh, and then click apply. You can also provide a line width as well, uh, just here. So you can make your line widths bigger or smaller. So here we are, we've uh, waited for our RGB to generate. Uh, with these layers, it's important to get your layering right. So to be able to see contours, you need those contours over the top or on top of your result or on top of any of your base layers that you might that you might want to utilize. So now we've got these ready to get these layers ready to go. We're going to create a layer. So to do that, we look for the little ruler in the page and hit new print layer. Give it a name. And then you can in your layout options, you can create uh you've got yeah a whole range of different options here that you can start to look at uh, as you get a little bit more advanced. If you right click uh on the page, you can get your page properties and they'll sit on the right-hand side here. So at the moment, it's A1. Uh, generally speaking, I will operate in A0 or A1 um, just for, yeah, um, just for kind of size and, um, and clarity around the map. We're in landscape orientation. If you want to um, move to portrait, you can move to portrait as well. So we've got our layout here. This is what's going to generate a page for us. And now we need to create a, or add a map. And we do that by going over here and selecting our add map tool and generating a window or a viewport to look at that map or to view that map. And that will now render for us. While that's happening, you've got a few other options here. You can create a scale bar by hitting the scale bar tool and popping that in. You can also create a north arrow by doing the same. So there's a north arrow here. 
that you can hit underneath the scale bar and you can give it a north arrow. Uh, these are customizable and you can play, you can have a look at those item properties and attributes down here in your segments. So for instance, we can create more segments uh, and we can provide a width to our segments as well. So at the moment we're at 75 map units. We might want it in hundreds or in fifties. So I encourage you to have a bit of a play with that uh, and um, yeah, and get a bit of a customized style. You can move them around as required or as needed. Uh, and you can also, up here, there's a legend tool. So you can hit that legend tool above the scale tool. And you can also pop in a legend uh, wherever you need. Wherever you need. Uh, there's some properties around the legend also. So you can choose which, you, which what things you see and which things you don't. Uh, and you can resize it uh, as required. So you, now you can see here we've got our we've got our contour layer, but it is very uh, very thin as far as its lines go, uh, and perhaps it's not all that uh, kind of readable, I suppose, or um, legible on the map. So that's where we uh, go back to our project, and we just want to change our line width here. So we're going to make it zero point seven line line width in our layer styling bar and we'll apply that you can also do it by right clicking properties and you can do it in the symbology window there we'll move back to our layer now hit your if you click your map there's a little refresh update map preview here Select that and that will refresh your map preview. Depending on the size of the machine, this will take some time. So um, yeah, um, just good to note that. Uh, and now, as we can see here, we've now uh, got a more legible contour line or a contour layer that we can see. So now that we've got that sorted out, we want to have a bit more of a look at some of our labeling structures. So at the moment, uh, we haven't got our labels uh, on our contours, so we need to uh, look, uh, look at fixing that. So if we hit labeling settings, Apologies, no. All right, so in order to do that, we need to go back to our QGIS window, find our labels. And apply. And there we are. Uh, so they're very big now. We probably want to halve those.
So again, this will this might take some time, uh, particularly with the machine. I'm on the laptop today. Uh, my larger machine, my desktop machine, is um, a little quicker, but it will depend on the file size that you're working with uh, and how many processes you're running. And now we can start to see our labels coming in. Uh, so it's important uh, or it's um, a good thing just to play with that size a little bit and look for um, yeah, uh, the best way to display those. You might need to play with your layers a little bit in order to do that uh, to, and your scale settings as well uh, as you get a little bit more advanced. And there we can start to now see our labels coming into play on our layout. So once you've got those settings right to go and you're happy with the um, the display, you can then export this to a PDF. Uh, just up the top here, there's a little export button under your menu. We'll go to our documents. We'll go back to our multi-species file. We'll save it here. and. Um, We'll save it as, give it a file name. Hit save. And uh, there's some, a few options there that you can start to uh, play around with depending on what you need. The default ones are generally okay for what you need to do or to create a printed map. And then that will export for you. And we can see here, we've got our print, our PDF map ready to go. So that can then be printed at uh, whichever size you like, uh, or you yeah, um, take it off and get it plot printed. So I hope this uh, tutorial has been useful. Uh, have a bit of a, or jump into QGIS, uh, have a bit of a play. As always, if you've got any questions or queries, get hold of one of the Drones for High team and they'll be able to point you in the right direction or get you in touch with the right person. Uh, I'm Danny from Drones for Hire. Um, hopefully you've been able to follow along and we've been able to give you a few tips on how to start to use your data as efficiently as possible. Thanks very much.